starting to get those showers into parts of Franklin, Jefferson County, and even parts south of that. Yesterday you had some decent rainfall, but this morning you haven't had much, so you'll get your turn here as we go towards the lunchtime hour. 67 right now at 9.09 in the morning, and winds are calm, but a thunderstorm still rolling over St. Louis Metro. The good news, if any, we've got this rain-cooled air in place, 60s all across the board this morning, but look at Joplin, Missouri, Whew, 90 degrees already, and that was the heat that we had to deal with just a few days ago. So a little bit of reprieve from the heat, but again, the extreme rainfall taking the center stage here for today. Numbers won't be overly warm north of town from Pittsville to Litchfield. You'll be in the 70s for highs, about 83 in Alton, 86 in Belleville. And then again, south, the farther south you go, that's where those 90s will be from Festus and Tarala and Lake of the Ozarks. Now, after the morning rain, we actually dry out for the afternoon hours, but the humidity stays high and it stays high through Wednesday. As we get into Thursday into Friday, the humidity levels start to come down just a little bit, a little more comfortable as we get into the weekend. But unfortunately, there's more rain in the forecast. We have showers returning tonight into tomorrow morning, and some of these could be heavy as well, moving over the same locations that picked up heavy rain today. You can see that on our future cast tomorrow about four or five o'clock in the morning. More rain expected. Same deal through about nine in the morning and then we'll dry out tomorrow afternoon before that next round of rain pushes in for Wednesday night into Thursday. Unfortunately, we will have another one to two inches right across parts that saw the heaviest rain today, even out towards the metro east side for places like Shiloh and Carlisle possibly one to three inches on the way there. So your 70 forecast shows dry weather returning by the weekend will still be wet on and off through the next couple of days and then Friday and Saturday were dry low to mid 80s and then another round of rainfall coming our way as we get towards Sunday and Monday. All right, it's one of those days where if you don't pay attention to traffic, usually today's the day you got to. I mean, Monica, wow, I've never seen it like this in all the years that I've lived here. Unless it's snowing, that's about it. I mean, normally we're showing this type of incident with the red, the purple, all throughout the maps when it is a winter day. And today you're dealing with flooding all throughout. I know a lot of you have been sending us messages on Facebook and Twitter saying, is it affecting my area? Yes, the answer is yes. Unlike the movie that's out right now, nope, it's yes. Yes, it is going to affect you on the highways and a lot of the side roads. 270 and 70 as well as 55. Those have been some of the bigger areas. Let's start here on the Illinois side. 55 northbound. The road's still blocked between exits 2 and 4. And then for drivers on Illinois 3, Mississippi Avenue, that road closure between Jerome Lane and Hesrick Street. That's for Illinois drivers. Now, let's move over here. 70 eastbound. We've had a lot of problems near Riverview, near Union, Jennings State. And then for those that are also in the St. Charles County area on 70 at Mid Rivers and Bryan. We'll get to that in a second. Westbound 270, you have an incident here right after the inner belt. And then we've had problems on 170 once you get on around Natural Bridge and St. Charles Rock Road. So 70 eastbound was closed, approaching Mid Rivers Mall Drive. And now you also see the issue with the road blocked right around Bryan Road and Highway K and 370, trying to get on to 70. The entry ramp from Earth City Expressway as well. That's where where our news vehicles stalled into the water. And again, fortunately, our Sydney Stallworth and Mercedes McKay are safe thanks to Pattonville, those amazing firefighters. You can see the highway closure here at Riverview and Highway 70. And this is the issue I've been mentioning again at Mid Rivers Mall Drive. So we'll be monitoring all of that for you. Little by little with the water receding, things are getting a little bit better. You can, you can see down uh, around 44 and 55, as Anthony mentioned earlier, those areas were not affected. And then here, 55 North, that road blocked as you can see trying to come into the East St. Louis area. That will be an issue for anyone who tries to get into the downtown bridges. All right, Monica, now we have been in studio since the four o'clock hour talking you guys through this storm as best we can. We've also had our reporters out live in the elements since that time, and that includes our Alex fees, who's truly been a, a trooper out there bringing us the very latest and Alex when you went to the dew, I thought you're going to fly away for a second there with your umbrella. Now it looks like we've got a break in the rain at this time, but you know, it, it's truly, truly a mess. And I see people behind you starting to assess some of that damage. Yeah, 
Uh, that's right, Rennie, and uh, they are assessing damage here in Brentwood. I'm going to step out of the way and give you a live look here. This is Brentwood Boulevard. We are looking south. It is completely flooded for about a two block stretch between Russell, essentially, and Marshall, I believe it is. That is the street with the flashing lights and the green light on the other side of the water. This has been the scenario here all morning long in Brentwood along Brentwood Boulevard. This is south of Manchester. That water at its height was probably three feet deep. And I want to show you something in particular that the videographer Kenny Kojer noticed earlier this morning. Check out the break in the green fence here. Uh, there is a lumber yard here. You can see much of the lumber floated out of that fence, basically breaking down the fence. And that fence or that lumber then floated across Brentwood Boulevard and is now stacked up on this side of Brentwood Boulevard, just stacked up alongside of the road. Hopefully some of that lumber is sal salvageable this morning, though I'm quite certain that by now it is waterlogged. So again, Brentwood Boulevard here in Brentwood, impassable this morning. Uh, the water has gone down a bit, but not much, frankly, and this is going to be an issue for quite some time to come. Live this morning in Brentwood, Alex Fees, five on your side. All right, thank you, Alex. We're gonna go out now to our Sydney Stallworth, who has had one heck of a morning. A morning that started out on the highway with a car getting swamped by floodwaters, a rescue by the Pattonville Fire Department. We thank them very much. Sydney, you're now in U City. How are things looking there? Yes, absolutely. Big thank you to Pattonville Fire Department. We were able to continue our work this morning. We're here at University City Police Department, which has become a flood shelter this morning. I was just inside and I spoke with a couple of officers who told me they had about a half dozen people inside seeking shelter from these uh, record breaking flash floods that we've been seeing. They had water inside for those people, uh, but since then they've all either left or been relocated to an evacuation point. I want to show you a photo that we received from Facebook here. Uh, this is a flooded parking lot that we're seeing uh, at the University City Apartments, and that's what police say they're seeing all over the city. Nothing but flooding. Several roads have been closed down uh, most of the overnight. We're told that Olive, Kingsland, parts of Vernon, parts of Hanley are closed down. Uh, I did speak earlier to Captain Dana Morley here in the parking lot of the police department. She told me they are expecting the floodwaters to go down. They did evacuate a number of people. I took a couple of notes while we were speaking. She told me that there are people trapped in houses, people trapped in cars that were calling 911, even some people on top of their cars climbing to the, the roof of their car to escape the floodwaters once their car became submerged. Now, she does say that she's expecting the floodwaters to go down, but they're trying their best. I asked them about staffing here at U City Police Department. Now, she did tell me that the officers who work the overnight shift are still here helping out answering calls because the calls are not stopping. The morning officers are here reporting for duty. They're answering calls as well. She tells me that the dispatchers are able to keep up at this point, but they don't know if that's going to change. She also says that right now they're able to handle the call load, but as the day goes on, they anticipate more people are going to be calling because homeowners continue to call 911 saying that water is making their way into the home. She says if that's happening to you, go to the highest point if you can. If it's an emergency, be sure to call 911. They're taking those calls uh, and in terms of urgency, they're answering those calls. But as far as I'm uh, told, they're doing their best, they're trying their best, and they're able to handle the number of calls that are coming in. That is a very high volume right now. Reporting live in University City, Sydney Stallworth, five on your side. Thank you, Sydney. All morning we've been asking you for photos and we are getting a lot of them into our newsroom right now. And please continue to send them our way. This is a photo from over by uh, Hanley. And as you can see, several of the cars there are completely underwater, a few still sticking up over the top. Uh, but you can also see that there's a rescue boat out there trying to bring people to safety. And our news director on holiday passed Forest Park within the last hour and a half. And that is what it looked like near the golf course. So if you thought you had a tea time today, that is not going to happen. You can see the rain. It let up, but there's going to be a ton of cleanup there. Uh, there and, of course, all across our area. Several agencies are warning you to stay home if you can so you don't get stuck. Right now, there are more than 20,000 Ameren customers without power because of the storm and the number has been going up throughout our morning today many of you will be out there cleaning up from the flood damage as Ameren crews try to restore your power at least 15 flights have been delayed at lambert airport and two have been canceled so far so as always we 
we really encourage you to call your carrier beforehand and make sure that they're still going to fly today. If they're on time or if they're delayed, you may also think about leaving early enough so that you can get to the airport mm -hmm. on time and OK. Yeah, you remember earlier this morning, Highway 70 was completely shut down. Just into our newsroom, by the way, students at Umsol will have a delayed start due to flooding. Of course, the campus will open at 10 this morning. After that, remote learning will resume. We're working to learn if any other summer classes are impacted. It has been quite the day for sure. Let's head over to meteorologist Anthony Slaughter. You're talking about historic rainfall today. Yeah, I mean, this is just incredible when you think about the numbers we are pushing close to nine inches at St. Louis Lambert officially 8.88 and that beats out the old record for any given day of a daily rainfall amount, which by the way, the record before today was August 20th back in 1915 when the remnants of the Galveston hurricane moved over St. Louis, producing 6.85 inches of rainfall. Now to give you some perspective, here are the other five top maximum one day rain totals in St. Louis. And again, you just saw the first one, August 20th, 1915, but you also had May 16th, which was about five and a half inches of rain. And then as the numbers dwindle down, you can see about four inches was kind of the running average here with the lower numbers, but we blew all of those out of the water for today. Now had this band of rain set up just 25, 50 miles northward, it would just be another rainy day in St. Louis. I mean, even last year, you may recall uh, parts of Columbia, Missouri had some flooding issues at the end of June, so it moved right over St. Louis Lambert, and that's the official number that goes down into the history books out towards Wentzville. You had upwards of 12 inches there, even parts of O'Fallon, Missouri, 11 inches, and you can see that swath move right through Belleville and now stretching out towards Nashville, Illinois side. You haven't had much in terms of uh, more than five to six inches of rainfall, but as we go towards the next couple of hours, the radar is still lit up showing heavy rain for the Illinois side right now. So if you're watching on the Illinois side, I'd say you probably will get another one to two inches of rain from Vandalia Highland back towards Mascuda, Lebanon back towards Nashville and New Athens. That's where the heaviest rain has set up for the time being. Now, as you zoom out, you can see some areas are starting to dry out west of St. Louis up near Bowling Green and Montgomery City, but you still do have this band of rain that stretches all the way back towards Jeff City and the Ozarks. But notice how southern portions of our viewing area are finally starting to see the rain after really not seeing much this morning. A lot of it was concentrated right in St. Louis. In fact, looking at some of the numbers, uh, areas near Arnold had only just about a tenth of an inch, but then you moved up into places like Mel and Oakville and you had upwards of an inch so you didn't have to drive very far to get just basically nothing to a whole lot of something 67 right now at St. Louis Lambert so at least we have the rain cooled air in place and as numbers climb today you can see the heat where it's at now Poplar Bluff at 82 Joplin Missouri's at 90 the heat will stay south of us today because that cold front that moved through just yesterday has stalled out to our south so it still will be muggy it just won't be overly hot so 60s out the door if you are still headed out for the morning hours. As we get into the afternoon, some places north of town may not get out of the 70s from Pittsfield, Litchfield. We'll have low 80s in Alton and mid 80s in St. Louis. And again, the farther south you go, that's where those 90s will be from Farmington over towards Rolla and Lake of the Ozarks. Now, after the morning rain, we're done with the rain for today. But once we get into tonight and tomorrow, another round of rain develops, and that means the muggy and sultry air will stick around. Once we get into Friday, it turns less humid and a little more comfortable for the upcoming weekend. Now, I wish I could tell you that we didn't have any more rain in the forecast, but that's not the case. Once we head into the overnight hours tonight into tomorrow morning, another round of heavy rain will set up over the St. Louis area, but we're not expecting this much rain like we saw today. Perhaps another one to two inches on the way for tonight into tomorrow and then another round of rain tomorrow night into Thursday. You can see again on the map where it sets up right over those same locations that had the heaviest rain this morning from St. Charles County, Lincoln County, parts of Calhoun and Greene County, even North County in St. Louis, back towards Alton, Carlisle and Mount Vernon. That's where the heaviest rain sets up for tonight into tomorrow night and Thursday. Then once we get into the weekend, we finally completely dry out for Friday and Saturday. Temperatures in the low to mid 80s and the next round of rain returns for Sunday and Monday. Yeah, that wet pattern, well, it's not going anywhere anytime soon.
All right, let's head over to Monica, get an update on traffic. Usually 923, there is nothing happening on the right. roads, but not today. What's going on? No, not today. I mean, Anthony, I don't think you or I or Rennie or Kay Quinn or Jim Castillo that are getting ready to come in and relieve us would ever think that we would be talking about our first responders getting in boats, swimming to try to help stranded motorists from the amount of rainfall that we saw overnight. That has been the story, a historic story that we will be talking to our family members, our grandkids, our kids all throughout the years to come. We have been talking about highway closures that have stranded people. Then people have been trying to get back on the highway, which has caused even more problems for our first responders. It's affected Illinois and the Missouri side. Illinois 3 Mississippi Avenue, that road closure is still there between Jerome Lane and Hisrick Street. We talked about trying to come in to East St. Louis on 55, and that is affected still for those drivers trying to get in from 5570 in towards 64. And then 70 eastbound, that road blocked from Riverview to Union. That has been the case all morning. 170 also, we've got an incident for drivers right near Natural Bridge and St. Charles Rock Road. And then the huge problem out in St. Charles County, not just on 70. We were talking about 79 as well as TR Hughes. Multiple areas. I told you I would tweet that out. I did. And I saw a lot of you been following me. Remember to do that at Monica Adams TV so we can always give you the breakdown of what's closed besides what we're able to tell you on air. 70 eastbound was closed all morning again around Brian K and Mid Rivers Mall Drive. That closure also affected our 370 drivers trying to get on to Highway 70. And there's a view of the camera for you looking a little bit better this morning. They do have some lanes blocked, but not completely closed. And it looks like they also at least westbound have 70 at Riverview back open. Still some backups at 170 at Natural Bridge in that southbound direction. Here's the view at K. So things are starting to recede and you are starting to move again out in St. Charles County, but it looks like they're still uh, affected here at 70 and Union. So as we said, if you can delay the commute, just like now, 925, I was thinking 10, 11 o'clock this morning, and then try to get into work, you would be much safer. So hopefully employers, you were able to allow your employees to do just that, delay it, or to work from home today. If you are getting ready to leave, just understand that they're still out there working and be careful. All right, thank you, Monica. We're gonna take some pictures right now. They continue to come into our, our newsroom just to show you just how bad the damage is here. This is flooding at the new Brentwood Park. It's on Manchester. It's under construction and it isn't slated to open up until the year 2023. The park, by the way, overlooks Deer Creek Connector Trail. I just had a friend of mine tweet me a picture of a restaurant down there that I had a hamburger at last week. That restaurant is now halfway underwater. We're going to go out live now to our Alex Fees, who is live for us in Brentwood. And Alex is getting no drier, no time soon. How you doing? Hanging in there, hanging in there, Rennie. I'm uh, videographer Kenny Coger and I have been at this for several hours now. We are live in Brentwood on Brentwood Boulevard. That's Brentwood Boulevard heading south behind me. Let me give you a, a live look at this car that Kenny and I have been monitoring all morning long here. It is uh, stranded in the flooding here on Brentwood Boulevard. This is Brentwood Boulevard just south of Manchester. The area between Russell and Marshall, basically, which is on the other side of all the water, it's about a two block area, is completely impassable and underwater at this hour, probably under three or four feet of water at best. I think the water this morning has receded somewhat, however, not a whole lot. And on this area here, Brentwood Boulevard, south of Manchester Road, is completely impassable at this hour. Um, quite a bit of work is going to be, have to be done here before uh, this, this area is passable, not the least of which is the water is going to have to drain away. And uh, traffic can pass through here once again. Live in Brentwood, Alex Fees, five on your side. All right, Alex, thanks so much. And we've had a lot of viewers as well as our own employees. Uh, earlier, I want to thank one of our employees, Jeff Bailey. He sent me a video as he was driving near 64 and McCausland and was talking about a couple of lanes that were still underwater there. That's actually how things started this morning. The very first closure was on 64 in the eastbound direction, trying to get up towards Grand. You remember many, many years ago when the highway was shut down as it dips down onto the highway and that caused hours worth of delays. Well, that's exactly what we had this morning, but it wasn't just for 64 drivers. It then became 55 and then 70, and we still have some highway closures today. But again, that's what you've been dealing with this morning. And we, you know, when you get situations like this, it puts quite the strain on our first responders. St. Louis County Office of Emergency is warning about several 911 calls. They're getting calls for multiple people stuck in the floodwaters. 
They say the main areas are in the central part of the county, so please be careful if you're going out today, and if you can, stay home. And just minutes ago, Rennie, we learned six flags will be closed today. They sent a tweet about 20 minutes ago saying due to the weather, they will no longer be opening their doors today. The amusement park did not say if it would be open tomorrow or any other time this week. Now, all morning we've been asking you for your photos and your videos, and we continue to get them coming in, and we really appreciate that. I want to take a look at a photo right now. Actually, we're going to go to Jim Castile instead. Uh, Jim is just now is going to relieve Anthony Slaughter in the weather department. Uh, Jim, have you ever seen anything like this? Uh, of course you haven't because right. this is 107 years we've been waiting for a day like this. Right. You know, this is when we talk about climate change. And, and to be honest, because how much water came out of that sky last night, and we had three days in a row of 100-plus temperatures. And, of course, we're continuing to see that rain coming down. And I'll get my clicker here, and then we can go through these maps. I show you what's going on. So look at how much rain fell at Lambert. This is the most we've ever seen in, uh, in less than a 24 hour period, really. But they take it as a, a daily rainfall record all time, eight, eight inches and 88 hundredths. So uh, actually it's going even higher than that because the rain continues to fall. So the daily old record, 6.85 inches set on August 20th, 1915. And there was a Galveston tornado, or a hurricane actually at the time. And then it, uh, of course, uh, that came up, the remnants came up our way and gave us uh, the, the rainfall during that period. All right, so how much rain have we seen? Uh, maximum one day total precip. Uh, Anthony's been uh, taking these totals throughout the day, just incredible amounts here. Um, uh, of course, we're looking at old numbers here, the how much rainfall in these records have have been set throughout the area. But this is the rainfall that we've had over the past 24 hours here. When you see the white there, uh, right around Winsville, over about 10 inches up to a foot and five to 12 inches total in that entire band extending from just south of Troy through St. Louis and then southward from there. So the current uh, Doppler weather radar continues to show that rain pushing through the area. Let's take this full guys and, and show you what's going on so you can see uh, what's happening with that rainfall. There we go. Uh, so that rain continues to go through Columbia, through Herman and also St. Louis. But notice that band is dropping further to the south. So we're continuing to see this lessen as we go through the morning hours around St. Louis, but it is still raining 67 degrees right now. So we've cooled off quite a bit. Humidity about 93%. That dew point is around 65. And look at these temperatures. So where's that heat that we had? Well, it's down around Joplin where it's 90 degrees. West Plains 85, Poplar Bluff at about 82. And of course, where we've seen the rain all night long and for several hours, it is uh, continuing to, to be in the 60s throughout Chesterfield and Scott Air Force Base. But we're are expecting some of that heat to rise back into the area today and likely seeing about 92 for Rolla, 87 in St. Louis, Alton, 83. So a little bit cooler to the north and a little bit hotter and very humid as we push down to the south. So what we have is a sultry day today. The humidity continues, the chance of rain continues, but we have a better chance of that coming back tonight during the overnight hours, unfortunately. Uh, after midnight and through the very early morning hours, kind of like last night, but but not as intense. We're not expecting that, but still we don't need any more rain. So the future cast is showing that shower activity all the way through. Here's midnight. Let's put this into motion and here's about 2:30 in the morning. But watch as some of this bubbles back up at 5 a.m. So this one particular model shows it kind of re. Uh, forming again late tonight and into the morning hours. So that's going to be an issue because everything is saturated. This is the most rainfall we've ever seen in a 24 hour period in many areas around St. Louis and Wentzville and Belleville. So in that entire line there, uh, but we will start to see a little bit better clearing as we head through uh, midweek, just a little bit, but still rain chances continuing through at least Thursday. So uh, rainfall accumulation, well, we're going to watch that. Of course, that continues to happen. So the seven day forecast, just to show you the percentages, we knew this rain was coming. We knew the cool down was coming, but this amount of rain, uh, we never could have ever predicted that almost nine inches of rain coming into St. Louis in one overnight period. 
So uh, 80, 89 for that high today, 91 for Wednesday, 86 for Thursday, and you see that percentage of rain. Uh, still a very good chance of showers, storms around, especially at night. Uh, scattered throughout the daytime, the ground is saturated. Some of that uh, wetness on the ground is going to uh, go back into the atmosphere and of course pop up showers and storms just from that alone, not to mention the front down to the south of us and bubbling back our way. So 84 for Friday and 86 for Saturday. So we're staying cool, uh, but of course uh, very humid with that chance of shower and thunderstorm activity. Okay. All right, thank you, Jim. You are watching continuing coverage of record setting rainfall all across the by state. Up to 12 inches of rain has fallen in the last six to eight hours. Renny Knott has stepped away. He's been on the air since four o'clock this morning. I'm Kay Quinn. I'm going to take his place. Monica Adams has been on the air all morning. Fantastic job, you, you guys. It's, it is a public service at this point Absolutely. because conditions are so dangerous. You've been talking about flooded roadways. Well, where the water's gone down, there are vehicles that are just left where they had been floating. So you may be on a road that's mm -hmm. passable and is looks to appears to be clear, but you could come around the corner and a car could be sitting in the middle of a lane. So you really have to be careful wherever you are, even if it looks like it's safe right now. Yeah, and Kay, we actually talked about this. I was traveling on 55 just past Bayless where all of that construction starts all the way in towards Arsenal and Grabway, and it was obviously 2.30 in the morning, so it's pitch black. You can't see what was gathering on the highway and suddenly went into the water. Everything that we tell you to not drive through, right. you didn't know, and that's what had probably the first two and a half hours of this commute this morning, that's what people were dealing with. They had no idea. They weren't trying to drive through. You didn't know. They didn't know it was there. No, you could right. not see that it just looked like a shadow on the highway and myself Anthony we both were very lucky that we did not float away in it like our reporters did Sydney Stallworth right. was right there at 141 and 70 thank you to Pattonville Fire Department and police officers they were able to rescue them they are safe so are the Pattonville firefighters thankfully but Kay we're talking about these first responders getting in boats swimming out to make sure that everyone was okay dozens of yes. water rescues yep. we're hearing especially in St. Charles County right. and these these are tallies that we are keeping. We will bring you all these details as soon as we can gather all the best information. But it's just an historic day yes. in St. Louis. This is record setting flooding that hopefully we won't ever see again for absolutely. a long time. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we have been thanking all of you that you've been, you've been sending in pictures to us, video, we were asking you to do so safely. And I had a woman that had sent a video to us. She saw the water come up in the cars that were in front of her neighborhood. She actually had to get onto some furniture because they couldn't get up onto the roof just to try to be safe. She wow. was rescued safely. Kay, I think that's the one thing we have not heard any serious injuries mm -hmm. from any of this, which is the best news yeah, of all. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Five on your sides. Alex Fees is live in Brentwood. He is on Manchester Road, I believe, between Brentwood Boulevard and Hanley. This is an area that floods even in uh, a much smaller rain. So this is a very uh, flood prone area. Alex, what are you seeing there right now? Okay, good morning. Actually, we are live on Brentwood Boulevard south of Manchester Road. I'm going to step out of the way and give you a live look here. This is on Brentwood Boulevard looking to the south. That uh, intersection you see with the school bus on the other side of the water uh, is Marshall. So it's about a two block stretch of Brentwood Boulevard here that's underwater. Videographer Kenny Coger is going to zoom in on this white vehicle that's been uh, stranded here for several hours in the water. As you can see, it's stranded basically up to its door handles or the top of the headlights. That's a good three or four feet of water there right in the middle of this. Brentwood Boulevard here is going to be impassable for quite some time. There was another situation here this morning that we covered in, in Ladue, west of here, where a police vehicle was stranded in one of the roads in the Foxboro subdivision off of Warson Road. That's in the vicinity of Warson and Clayton. But again, we're live this morning in Brentwood, where Brentwood Boulevard is closed for a two block stretch, basically from Russell to the north to Marshall to the south. Okay. All right, Alex Fees live from Brentwood Boulevard. Now this rain has been pounding the St. Louis area as we've been telling you all morning long. This is video from a few hours ago in Bridgeton where you can see rain flooding the storm drain there and spilling into parking lots of businesses. 
also have video from Hampton in St. Louis City. Right now, more than 17,000 Ameren customers, they are still without power. That number, of course, continuing to grow. And we have video from earlier this morning when our reporter Sydney Stallworth and Mercedes McKay had to be rescued from flood water. Look at this. It happened as they were headed to a live shot in Maryland Heights. And as you can see, their car suddenly became trapped in the flash flooding. This is 141 near 70. Thankfully, they are both OK. And this is video of them being rescued just before 5 o'clock this morning. Firefighters okay. from the Pattonville Fire Department were able to pull them from the news vehicle, brought them to a fire truck, and then to the nearest fire station. Okay. So this Mercedes is a clear warning to you. Avoid driving through flooded areas at all costs right now. Remember, the water can come up very quickly. Okay. It may Mercedes look okay one moment and then just rise very rapidly the next. The best idea is to stay home if you don't have to be outside. Okay. All morning long, of course, we've been asking for your photos. We're getting dozens of them. We're going to show you, uh, oh, here we have a tweet from Six Flags. Six Flags closed today due to all this rain. Tuesday, July 26th, a date going in the record books for a record amount of rain. We were also getting pictures, as I mentioned, from all over the bi-state. And we will bring you some of those as soon as we get them. All right. Let's check in with Monica. She's going to update us on traffic. Okay, it's been a mess this morning, of course. I think one of the biggest problems we had was on Highway 70, and that's for our drivers right around River, uh, more so around Riverview, Jennings Station, the Union area, Cary. We talked about about 12 cars that were stranded in the water there. And then you can see that purple line for 55 drivers. For those of you westbound or northbound that usually try to come in towards East St. Louis, that stretch is blocked. The bridges themselves are looking okay this morning and we're seeing things a lot better here on 44 and 70 as you move in towards the city. If you are traveling this morning though and you're taking that drive on 44, <coughs> excuse me, or 55, those are fine. 44 earlier we had a closure at Shrewsbury. We also had a closure at Jefferson. Those are back open. Things are looking much better as you can see as we get to the midday. This is about the time that we said if you could delay your work hours till about 10 o'clock that it would be much better and that is the case in about 20 minutes you'll see the highways should be back to green in most portions. For those on 70 around Bryan, K, Lake St. Louis, in towards Mid Rivers Mall Drive and 370, that's been the big stretch that has uh, caused problems. You can see, we said once the water went down, then those crews are going to have to make sure that there's no damage that would affect you long term. You can see they're here in that left lane for westbound drivers, and they are on the ramp for those eastbound drivers at Mid Rivers Mall Drive. The view at Riverview, you can see the rain is is heavy again here for those drivers heading into the city. 170 at Natural Bridge, that southbound on the right hand side, that closure we had earlier at St. Charles Rock Road causing that backup. 70 at K moving along, and then we're looking at Bryan Road where that was closed as well. For those trying to get to the airport, the highway's back open, but I did still see some problems right around Cypress, and then some of the entry ramps for 370 drivers also trying to get on to 70. So those have been the biggest issues this morning, but unlike the what we talked about about for the last, what, five hours? I went on at 4 a.m. We started talking about that 64 closure eastbound at Grand. That's when it all started this morning. You can tell it is better. Still some issues out there, though, so just be aware of that as you start to head out. All right, thank you, Monica. So you have just been fantastic sending us photos. Remember to do so only if it's safe, but take a look at this. All morning long, we've been getting these photos, and um, this is a picture from Zach in Mascouda, Illinois. He says lightning struck a tree in front of his house, set it on fire despite the wet conditions. Wow. Send us your photos and videos. Text them to 314-425-5355 and we will share them on the air. Alert your community about the hazards in your area. It is 9.42, and we're going to talk with meteorologist Jim Castillo, now coming in to relieve our Anthony Slaughter. Yeah. Jim, it has been quite a historic day. It, it really has. You know, it's going to go down in history as one of the stormiest nights we've ever seen in St. Louis. I remember seeing that lightning even at midnight last night and continuing. I woke up several times 
with round after round. And like Anthony was talking about, uh, this is called training. It's like a train. You have one box train after the other, and it's just one storm cell after the other kept reforming and moving over places like Wentzville. Look at these torrential rain totals, almost a foot of, of, uh, of uh, rain there. St. Paul, about almost a foot, probably could even be there by now. We need to update these totals a little bit, but it's still raining and it is tapering off a little bit. I'll show you that coming up. In University City, 10.84 inches. Cahokia Heights, 6.72. Belleville, 6.33. And at Lambert, 8.88 inches. And, and again, when I was coming into uh, KSDK this morning, uh, right before 9 a.m., it was still raining really hard and even flashes of lightning and rumbles of thunder out there. Not as bad as it was during the overnight hours, but by the way, the 8.88 and it's going higher is the most amount of rain we've ever seen in a, uh, in a day. And, and really that was only in, a, in, a, in about a six to 12 hour period. Uh, old daily record was set uh, 6.85 inches August 20th, 1915. The remnants from a hurricane that was down around Galveston Island and moved up our way. So here is our total accumulated rainfall that we've seen. The white there around Wentzville has been the heaviest amount we've seen, about a foot. And then it goes right through St. Louis and Belleville and then down into Nashville, Illinois. Further south, you're, you're wondering, what? what are you talking about? There's no storms anywhere. But yeah, down around Farmington, not really a stormy day or night, but uh, the storms are beginning to sag your way. So I'll show you that coming up too. Here's the current radar. And uh, flash flood warnings continue Troy O'Fallon through St. Louis till about at least noon. Uh, but we're still looking at some rain from Danville through Troy. And again, not as heavy as it was last night. But when you see the golds here, the Metro East and through Salem and Carlisle, Illinois, Nashville, heavy showers, some thunderstorm activity still mixed in there. Potosi are beginning to see a little bit of development here. Uh, this this activity is beginning to either redevelop just to the south or this whole line itself finally starting to sag down toward the Farmington area. So something we'll keep our eyes on throughout the day. It really is not ending completely. We're hoping that it would end a little bit because there's another chance tonight. Here are the flash flood warnings in the green shaded areas here. And either you have that or flood advisories where we've seen that training of the rain. So 67 degrees right now, and it feels like 67. So humidity way up there, about 93%. Dew point 65. And of course, we still have that heat in southern Missouri. It's near 90 degrees right now at this hour, uh, right around uh, not only uh, Springfield and also Joplin, but then 60s where we've had that incredibly heavy rainfall so that's not going to change if the rain tapers off which we're expecting it to do so this afternoon we should see those temperatures really go way back up there closer to the upper 80s mid to upper 80s in st louis alton maybe lower 80s pittsfield upper 70s and you see the difference in temperature here so the front is near the area and we've got that lift and all the moisture to get those showers and storms reforming again so it is a sultry day today, extremely humid and continuing into tomorrow. And then for Friday, that chance of shower and thunderstorm activity really starting to taper off. So that future cast is showing that chance of rain throughout the day, a lot of cloud cover too. And then during the overnight hours, watch especially by morning, this particular model blows up some showers and storms across the area again. So something we will keep our eyes on. Uh, looks like the atmosphere is ripe for that activity again, but hopefully, and we're not expecting it to be as intense as it was last night. There's the accumulated rainfall, and here's that seven-day forecast. 89 for today, 91 for Wednesday, 86 Thursday. Still an off and on shower thunderstorm chance, especially at night and in the morning hours and, and scattered throughout the daytime. Friday, less chances for rain, which is good. Now we don't need any. 84 for Friday, Saturday 86, 20% chance of a shower or storm, Sunday 88, and Monday a few storms still possible, and we start to heat back up again. Okay. Has it been a drought buster for everybody though, Jim? No, not for everybody. You're right. You know, this again, right over the metro back toward Wentzville and also into uh, St. Clair County, places like that. Yes, a drought buster. But to the south, it really has barely rained. Okay, great. Yeah. We will check back in with you. Thank you so much, Jim Castillo. Yeah. So.
you know that the utilities, MSD, Ameren, all very busy in emergency mode this morning. And right now we know that more than 20,000 Ameren customers are without power because of the storm. That number's been growing all morning long. We will continue to update it. Today, many of you will be cleaning up from this flood damage as Ameren crews try to restore power. So know they're working on it and know that hopefully your power will be coming back on soon. And we've been talking about Lambert Airport. Here's a live look for you this morning. Nice to finally see the highway, by the way, moving again because that was closed, affecting several of you that were calling in and tweeting, telling us you had flights. Of course, those have been delayed. 15 delays, at least two canceled. And they did have some standing water where there were vehicles right on Cyprus. Taking a look at this camera, I don't see that any longer. So hopefully that has all receded and they have uh, not only just 70, but the outer road moving again as well. Okay, so here's what to do if your car starts flooding, you drive into high water and you lose control. This is video from Sydney Stallworth and Mercedes McKay. They both had to be rescued from a flooded car. So if your car is underwater, maybe filling up quickly, the Federal Emergency Management Agency says, find a pocket of trapped air. It's normally up against the roof. Take a big breath, then roll down or break your window to swim out. Then swim to shallow water or high ground as fast as possible. Everyone should avoid the water as much as possible, even when it's only six inches or looks to be very low on the road. Yeah, we know it was an extremely scary day for Sydney, for Mercedes. They were rescued by Pattonville firefighters, taken to uh, Firehouse 3, I believe. She moved from there and then went to University City because we were hearing a lot of water rescues there. University City Evacuation Center at Pershing Elementary is where she is live this morning. Sydney, what can you tell us as far as what's going on there? Well, uh, Monica, K, okay, same situation, but I am really shocked by what I'm hearing. We just arrived to the evacuation point here at Pershing Elementary. Um, I'm told there are about 45 people inside here who needed to come in need of shelter. I just spoke with one woman who shared her daughter's story with me. She just moved into her home about two months ago, and almost everything in that home is completely destroyed. I want to give you a look at what we're seeing in University City, we received a, a photo on Facebook. I believe we have that photo um, and it was a picture of a parking lot that was flooded at the University City apartment and that's just a taste of what the people here around University City are getting. The rain has not stopped. It's still raining now. I was over at the uh, University City Police Department earlier that was made uh, a shelter. There were about a half dozen people seeking shelter there who were then either relocated here to this evacuation point at Pershing Elementary or they stayed there at the police department uh, or were even picked up by family and friends. They were given water and shelter there. Again, 45 people, I'm told, that's an estimate, are seeking shelter shelter here at Pershing Elementary. If you're on the roadways uh, at all at University City, I've heard that there have been some closures, some, some uh, blocked off roads. Some of those roads are all of Kingsland, parts of Vernon, parts of Hamley. Now, I did speak with Captain Dana Morley of University City Police while I was over at the police department just moments ago. Now, she told me that their staffing is adequate to handle the amount of calls that are coming in, but the calls aren't stopping just like the rain. The rain is coming down. More people are calling in need of help. They've rescued people from inside their homes. They've rescued people from inside their cars. They even had a couple of calls that people were were asking for assistance. They were on the roof of their cars because the road was so flooded they could not get out from inside of their car. Now police say that the the uh, overnight police officers are still working uh, to answer calls. They have the day side police officers that are now on the clock working and dispatchers are working around the clock. Again, I want to share a little bit about the story that I was uh, just told from a, a lovely woman named Felicia who was kind enough to come over and speak with us about her daughter's situation. Her daughter has MS, needs medication. She's not able to find her daughter's medication in the home. Her daughter's cell phone is lost. All of her uh, clothes, her four boys that she has, four sons, their clothes have been uh, almost ruined by the flooding. Um, so that was a very emotional story, and I, I want to thank her for sharing that with us. But 
but she's one of the 45 people who are here at this evacuation point in need of assistance. They don't know what to do, but luckily they do have this evacuation point set up here at Pershing Elementary in University City, and they're trying to help as many people as they can. And we're standing outside um, talking to a couple of those people, and I'm, I'm really uh, shocked and heartbroken by some of the stories that I'm hearing. Guys. And Sydney, you know, University City has a history of terrible flooding, flooding that has claimed many lives. This is something that happens repeatedly in some neighborhoods there. So, um, Sydney, hopefully you're not hearing anything about, you know, we haven't heard about injuries or fatalities, and hopefully that continues. Yeah, and Sydney is still with us. Sydney, I don't know if that number will Absolutely. grow. You said 45 already. And we mentioned about two and a half hours ago on our broadcast news that one of the worst areas was, in fact, in U City. That's where Kay and Sydney, that's where they were sending swimmers and those in boats to try to get to safely um, rescue those. Sydney, for those that you have talked to, we were mentioning that the best news of all of this is that we didn't hear any serious injuries or fatalities, as, as Kay was mentioning. Have you heard anything from authorities there? No, I have not. You know, I spoke with there's a the community director is here uh, and uh, there's also a couple of people who let us know, you know, obviously to be con we're not going inside. There are quite a few people in there who are dealing with a very hard time right now, uh, but I'm, I've seen people come in and out of the doors uh, with blankets, some even in their pajamas. It, it's it's um, a heartbreaking sight. And that woman that I was speaking about earlier who I spoke with Felicia, who says her daughter uh, is it was her home who was destroyed her things that were destroyed her medicine that can't be found her cell phone that's somewhere lost in the water she has four sons her daughter has four sons she tells me that her daughter and her four grandchildren all boys walked to her home barefoot they were all in their pajamas uh to get help and her home was eight blocks away um so we're hearing some some very Serious emergency assistance organizations will be out helping mm -hmm. and many communities are going to really need that help and the help of all of us. To and unfortunately, as you heard Jim Castillo and Anthony say, we have more rain that we do not want. We had such this dry drought in many uh, areas and now we're talking about a, a completely different story this morning. We will be updating you, of course, on all of this. So stay with us online and on air. We're going to stay on top of this historical flooding all day long right here on Five on Your Side. And remember, have the Five on Your Side app, Five on Your Side app downloaded for updates. We are going to go to Show Me St. Louis now, and then we'll see you back here at noon. Be safe. Hi, Bobby. I can hear you.
and for other purposes. Saturday only at Ashley's Black Friday in July Midnight Madness. Buy one, get one 50% off store wide. Buy this leather sofa, get the matching love seat half off. 10 a.m. to midnight Friday and Saturday only at Ashley. Despicable attacks by Lucas Kuntz. But what's his real record? When he last ran for office, Kuntz sounded like a Republican. Kuntz opposed gay marriage, wanted to abolish funding for Planned Parenthood, and Kuntz even wanted more criminal penalties for marijuana possession unfairly targeting black Missourians. Against gay marriage, against Planned Parenthood, more jail time for marijuana. Lucas Kuntz, that's his real record. I'm Trudy Bush Valentine, and I approve this message. Even though some things are far away, we plan for them ahead of time because... to every detail and make sure everyone is remembered. If you were hurt by a careless driver, justice demands that the truth be uncovered and you get paid all you deserve. At Brown and Crouppen, we'll find the truth and get you all the justice you deserve. Don't miss Ashley's Black Friday in July Midnight Madness. 10 a.m. to midnight Friday and Saturday only. Buy one, get one half off store-wide. Or get 0% interest for five years with no minimum purchase and no down payment. Two days only at Ashley. Show Me St. Louis is sponsored by Eckert's. Find your place in the fun by visiting Eckert's.com. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Show Me St. Louis. I'm Mary Coltwrighter. Now, if you missed yesterday's show, you also might have missed the reintroduction of this iconic spot. Yes, it is the Window Studio, and we're so glad to be here for another day. Now, let's take a look at what's coming up on today's show. Coming up on today, experience the newest ship to join the Disney Cruise Line family. We'll take you for a tour of the new Disney Wish. And the National Create a New Kalachi Contest winner is in the Show Me Kitchen. Hear more about the winning millennial creation later in the show. Now, we're starting the show with something that's top of the mind for everyone this morning, of course, and that's the weather. Jim Castillo, you've been covering this severe weather now. Five on your side, hard at work. What do people need to know before heading out the door today? We're going to check back in with Jim later on, but first... Let's get into our trivia. We do have Jim. We do have Jim after all. Uh, Jim, <laughs> what can you tell us before people head out the door today? I mean, a very crazy, hectic overnight situation. We sure did. We had, uh, obviously, the most amount of rain we've ever seen in St. Louis. And, and really, 